This week on CrossFeed. Losing faith is bad for your health. Lift high the flag. Should you pray for Christopher Hitchens? Indonesian persecution. And what do you name the church? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hi, Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, where we are celebrating the fact that Kansas City is now 3-0 and with a dominating uh, um, game against San Francisco today. Well, that's fine. You be excited about that. I have something much better to be excited about. Um, all right. I have to start this out. First of all, some of the stuff was was your idea or, or based off of some of your ideas. Um, so I have I have you to thank in part, but mostly I've got to thank because this is really cool. Um, I all right before the service I always say a little prayer as I approach the altar and um, you know usually it's something to the effect of uh, God you know give faith to the people here and give them the assurance of your love and you know and that kind of thing and um, and today I. Uh, and I, I, I don't know that I've ever done this before, but I pray God, um, show these people that you are strong to save. And, um, and, and so then I went through the service and my sermon was, was about, uh, it was based on the Psalm about praising the Lord. And, um, and the idea was to praise the Lord in good times and bad and, um, and recognize that God's not limited by our expectations and, and things like that. And, um, and that, you know, when you're sliding downhill, turn around and, and, uh, let God push you up, uh, back up and, and keep going. And <clears throat> so that's kind of a bad summary. You have to hear it to really get what it was about. But anyway, so after the service, um, I gave a presentation on a program that we worked out with our evangelism board. All right. And, and here's how, here's the, the gist of it. All right. Um, using the, uh, outreach marketing company, outreach.com, um, which is, this is the idea, the part that I got from Jim about doing, uh, uh, mass mailing. And, uh, but instead of, of doing, a a sort of, uh, hit every house in a mile radius or something like that. Uh, we decided to go with their new mover package because we have, was it, t- I'm trying to remember, I think it's 31 people move into a one mile radius around our church every month. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to send out a, a personalized postcard to each of them or, or have it sent to them since, um, outreach does it for you. And, um, and inviting them uh, to come to our church, and then it'll have a um, in in the note there is a, it says if um, and I have to work out exactly how we're going to word this and everything, but it'll say if you bring this card with you, we will give you a free DVD, and then we're going to have um, um, like uh, fireproof and facing the giants and. Um, uh, the Veggie Tales Jonah movie and, and, you know, different movies with Christian messages. And, um, and, and I think I'm going to throw in uh, copies. If people don't want a movie, they can, um, uh, V spirituality, the cross, uh, the book, uh, which we're doing a study on right now, but we have more copies than we really need. And so, That'll sort of make it worth their while to come, even if, you know, sort of, well, we didn't really like that church, but we got a free DVD out of it, you know. And um, that'll help us to know whether that person came, you know, potentially because of the postcard and, and lets us know that, you know, it's it's worth it to, to keep doing this. All right. So then they also give you the contact information um, for the people. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to go out in uh, teams of two and um, or I'll probably just do some during the day too. Um, I can do some walking that way, get in shape, but we can, uh, we're going to go out and we're going to deliver a packet to, um, to each of those people um, 
in the month following when they get their postcard. And that packet is going to have, uh, first of all, a letter from me, um, a DVD that has uh, like a service um, so they can see what our services are like and a um, our, our puppet troupe and one of their uh, performances and uh, one of my uh, puppet things that I do with the preschool and uh, like a, a screencast showing them our website and, and some of the different features on our website and some different stuff like that. All right. And then it's also going to have, I'm trying to remember now, um, well, the big other thing is it's going to have coupons in it um, from local businesses. And part of the note's going to say, um, want to welcome you to the community. And um, to these are just some businesses that our members like to frequent. Hopefully you will... Um, Hopefully you'll meet some of them there, and if not, you can meet them on Sunday morning. Did I get that one from you, Jim, too? Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. And um, and so... The idea that I had, all right. Uh, yep. And, and so then what we're going to do is then we give them these coupons, and that way, even if they don't come, they've still gotten a benefit from us. Uh, it benefits local businesses, and um, and it, if they... You know, if if they come, it's it's a benefit to us too, and uh, and so and and we have members that are small business owners and stuff like that. So this will presumably benefit our members as well um, by helping them to to support their businesses. But that's really kind of a side thing. Um, and uh, so then, let's see, DVD uh, package delivered. Yeah, okay. So that's basically it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of expensive to, um, you know, when you're looking at uh, the the number of, of cards that we're talking about um, being sent out, the cost of the DVDs uh, to buy them and, and everything. And, and um, you know, th- things are kind of tight around here and, and spending a lot of extra money on a, on a big project is um, not, you know, there's just not a, a big budget for that kind of stuff. And so, uh, so I said, well... Uh, if people want to give above and beyond their offerings, and I think this was your idea too, wasn't it? <laughs> um, and uh, that that we'll have a door offering, and and anybody that's interested in making this happen can can give to to that. And so we had a door offering today, and um, the we figured, well, you know, we'll, we'll see what we get. And then, um, uh, we'll kind of let people know where we're at and how much more we need and, and stuff like that. And hopefully in a few weeks, you know, we'll, we'll have enough together or, or maybe a couple months or whatever. Well, let's just say that the, what came in was well above and beyond, um, you know, what we actually needed to pull it off. And, uh, so people are really excited about it. You know, that I had comments, boy, this is the best evangelism idea that I've heard since I've been here and, you know, and just all kinds of stuff. And mm-hmm. so I'm excited about it. The The church is excited about it. And I think, but what a great thing to be excited about an evangelism opportunity, you know, and I've got people coming up to me going, Hey, I would, you know, put me down for going along to help deliver these things. I'd love to do it. My kids are interested in, in, um, participating in that and stuff. And so people are interested in actually going out and, and, and doing that and stuff. And, and so it's just, every, just to, to have everybody all fired up about going out and, and sharing the gospel and inviting people to church and stuff like that. It's just, uh, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> cool. Now, one thing we've been doing um, is uh, last Friday, a week ago, they started a um, what uh, our evangelism chairwoman is calling Family Fun Night. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's just nothing going on with families, you know, on a Friday night. You know, you know what do I do with, you know, me and my kids and stuff? And So it's a free pasta dinner. And then we just have different games sitting around the, 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 fa- the, the, the fellowship hall. First week, we had 20 people there, um, and, and two people brought, two or three people brought friends along with them. And then, um, last Friday now, we only had about a dozen, maybe not even quite that many. It was a real, it was a much smaller group, but one of the families from our preschool was there, 
who are looking for a church. The girls have never been baptized. Um, and um, so my wife and I wound up spending the whole night just talking to this couple and their kids. The cute, two cutest little twin girls. And uh, and they were asking me all kinds of questions and stuff. And um, they said, now they weren't in church this morning, but that she did say we, they would be, we would be seeing them. And the little girl to me left said, we'll see you next Friday. So they're, they're really excited too. So, um, it, it's really, and it's building some relationships between the preschool, our preschool and our congregation, which we want to do. So it's really being a good thing for us to be doing too. And, cool. uh, so, uh, just some really exciting, cool things. So, uh, well, you know, you know, if this keeps going and stuff, um, and you guys keep doing all these cool things, Dale, you know, you may have to look at growing, starting a new church. And what would you name that new church? Oh, I've got it. I've got it. We're going to call it Guided Missiles Church. Guided Missiles Church. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I, I sort of like Satan in Trouble Ministry. <laughs> or, or, or maybe Jehovah Sharp Sharp. <laughs> I like, we are the relaxing pew ministry. <laughs> and happy go lucky church of god <laughs> okay while we were talking about liquid fire that's that's a pretty good one too um i okay, wonder what goes on at that church anyway um also there's one my son would like um what is it um something about um sharp shooter church or something like that um uh, we, we take aim at Satan. Oh, or trigger happy like ministry. Trigger always, happy ministry. Yes. Always firing the devil. Uh, okay, so this is an article from Nigeria, and um, and the uh, uh, and for years, one of the you know uh, leftover things in Nigeria, of course, was um, the European churches were very big there, um, and, and to a certain extent, still are. Uh, for example, the Lutheran Church in Kenya. Uh, was started by the uh, Lutheran Church of Sweden. And in many ways, it, uh, it's still very uh, liturgical and uh, very high church uh, coming out of that Swedish tradition down there. And and, and so that's, um, and there's some others. And on the other hand, there are the, this feeling among some people who in Africa that this was very, very rigid, very, very... Um, formal and they wanted something that was more loud more what they would even say african and so they began to grow very much in pentecostalism and uh and these uh prosperity ministries are very big too Mm -hmm. and so they've started then uh a lot of these churches and they uh come off with a lot of very different names and the names that Dale and I were running back and forth were actually some of the names of some of these churches that they had um and uh, th- those are just some of the odd names uh there's also Jesus the landlord devil go here am um not sure why um <laughs> Uh, uh, um, uh, fire by fire ministry. Um, Seven Thunders of Jesus Bible Church. Yeah. Best spot in the land of God church. So, uh, David killed Goliath ministries. So, <laughs> and this one confuses me and scares me a bit. Laboratory Church of God. <laughs> yeah, there's scientists, I guess. <laughs> I guess there's something. So, um, now, I mean, and the guy's just kind of saying this is really kind of silly. Um, yeah, but they really, you know, highlight these idea of deliverance and, and prosperity gospel. Uh, now, he's absolutely right. Sociologically, what you name your church is really going to be very reflective of a lot of your theology. I one time had a uh, mission planter, a mission developer, who said probably the most important question for a church is what do you call it? So what do you call it? You know, what is its name going to be? And we, you know, so there's a ton out there of St. Paul, um, Timothy, um, St. John. I mean, uh, there's, there's a whole ton of those, um, which reflect one age. Um, and then, uh, you have your, your new life, your new community, new song, Mm-hmm. Uh, those were really kind of big in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, our mission up here, 
uh, connecting point. Yeah, which again, it sounds it's a very different sounding name. Um, relationship focused, though. Yeah, but it's relationship focused, and you, yep. that just and that you can tell that from the name. Yeah. Um, the church plant um, here in North Ridgeville is uh, called Emmaus Journey, and so that sort of life with the risen Christ kind of um, idea that this is uh, you, you get this sort of discipleship kind of. Um, sense from it uh there's another one called the plant that which is kind of a pun because it's a church plant um but you know their their symbol is a a little sort of sprouting plant um so you get the idea of growing in faith and and that kind of thing yeah i would you know part of it though is to getting away from some of these bible names i mean you know emmaus journey okay it sounds cool if you know what an emmaus is right right but you're dealing with biblically illiterate people, they don't know what an Emmaus is. Right. Um, and so that's, you know, that's one of the things about working and designing that. <coughs> you could, if you wanted that journey idea, you know, you could go with Life Journeys Lutheran Church. Mm hmm. Sure. You know, or something like that, or, you know, Life Journey Church or something like that that would, you know, highlight that idea. But yeah. it does show that in a lot of these, these church names, that we are in a much more unchurched culture. Yeah, because you're not hearing too many uh, um, of those churches that have those saints names or something like that, or those Beth- Bethesda Lutheran Church or Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Right, right. Now, see, even ours, Shepherd of the Ridge. Um, you've got the the shepherd part. You know, there's a biblical imagery, um, but then of the ridge is there's a lot of stuff in North Ridgeville that's ridge this or ridge that because of the ridges of Lake Erie and um and which North Ridgeville is built on the north ridge of Lake Erie that's why there's no Ridgeville or South Ridgeville or something like that um but uh you know that sort of has us rooted in the community it it ties in with all of the other sort of community stuff mm-hmm. so and there's definitely a sense of wanting to be involved with the community and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I really, I do think, you know, what you call your, you know, what you call the church is very important. Um, but that's where you have a lot of whole, a lot of the Pentecostal churches emphasizing things like Holy Spirit, Catholic, the Holy Spirit, Pentecostal church, abundant or, you know, life and... abundant life, right. Uh, that really is a, a very strong emphasis for them, but so probably you know, I just uh, don't want to name something "Run for Your Life" ministry. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, no. Or God is real ministry. Jesus no get muscle, but he get power. <laughs> <laughs> no. The yoke must broke. You know, a lot of strange things there, but uh, so uh, um, uh, the other thing that interests me, of course, is the fact that you know, just talking about how. Uh, you know the the deliverance um, and 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 prosperity gospels. It's, it's interesting. The elegance and panache that many Pentecostal preachers avail themselves made it appear exceptionally lucrative. Um, and that is, you know, un, you know, that is, you know, within that era, a, a, a concern that yeah, there is this prosperity gospel. Therefore, you should look quite prosperous. Right. Yeah. And and of course in Nigeria, which is excuse me, a very poor country, if you come along and say, hey, join this church and, you know, give your money and you'll be rich, then, uh, you know, that's going to appeal to a lot of people. And yet um, there's, it says, uh, critics of church growth in Nigeria have attributed this development to the uh, poverty level of the country. And even in Africa, they claim the preachers harp on the fact that God could provide all the needs of all the people and that he's not a poor God. And yet poverty is getting worse uh, instead of better, even though all these prosperity gospel churches are popping up. Yeah. So, and, you know, and I've, I, I that, that sort of imagery that God is not a poor God, I, I used that imagery in my sermon this morning, but I didn't tell him, you know, you're all going to get rich. <laughs> right. I, I talked about God's ability to, to save people. And well, and God's ability, you know, um, I, I I preached on the Timothy, you know, godliness with contentment is great, uh, uh, with great gain, and you know, I my theme was uh, um, content without content, um, you know, but you know that God is going to take care of us, mm-hmm. but 
therefore we can, you know, be free of needing the content and stuff in our lives. Just the opposite of what they would say is God will take care of you and you're a king's kid. Therefore, you deserve the best and God will give that to you. Um, very dangerous way of, of, of theology, mm-hmm. the prosperity gospels and things. Yep. Um, but maybe they're, you now you're raising money to, uh, uh, um, send out, uh, flyers and things and, and, and market your church a little bit, if I can use that term. Um, what about raising money to fly a Christian flag? Huh. All right. So let's see. We are, let me find the story. In um, Key, North Carolina. Yep. And uh, there is a there was a Christian flag that had flown over the Veterans Memorial in Central Park, and the city council voted three to one to remove the flag from the memorial um, at the advice of the city attorney, who said it violated the First Amendment. And uh, the ACLU of North Carolina and the Americans United for the Separation of Church and State had urged the council to remove the flag. But Reverend Kevin Broyhill, pastor of Calvary Baptist, said his church will raise money and will organize a rally over the issue that will be held sometime in October. Right. Um, and there is a – they can't find out exactly where this guy uh, – uh, um, it says Calvary Baptist, um, uh, um, which has 870 members, will work with Reverend Ron Beatty and his organization Return America, a conservative Christian – uh, group. Um, and the guy said, um, you know, um, uh, um, I believe, um, the citizens of King are very upset that their flag was taken down. Broyhill said yesterday, it means something to them. It represents their heritage. People give to what they believe in. Well, I don't know. If I'm going to ask people to give, I don't know. It's this, this, this whole two kingdom thing again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I, I don't understand what putting this 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 Christian flag up there says. Right. You right. know, it, it you know to me it sends the message that um, if you're if you live here you should be Christian or that you know especially at a a veterans memorial you know I am and and, and especially of. Now, I mean, here's the the issue with it being a flag, even as opposed to a cross. You know, I could see with a memorial where a cross, and we've talked about this before um, just recently, a cross and whether that, you know, will give comfort to at least a a certain segment of people um, who are visiting this war memorial, right? Um, Whereas a flag, a flag is a... That's something else entirely. The flag very much has a sense of sort of belonging um, and and standing for a, a certain position and and that sort of thing. And so it seems odd that they're fighting for a flag that's very much a symbol of identity. Right. Well, I, I like this guy says, I believe the citizen of the king are upset that the flag was taken down. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not like you said, I've gotten so many phone calls from people who want me to deal with, deal with something about this. You know, I've had people come up to me and they're really upset. I mean, you know, how do you know uh, they're, they're upset? You know, that, you know, I mean, that's a pretty overwhelming, you know, okay, granted, there's only four people in city council, but still three to one uh, to remove it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and what if you, I don't know, um yeah, and, and and this group return America. Return to what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're we're not we're not a theocracy. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the you know, returning them to the morality that we had in the fifties, which we still had a lot of moral problems. They were just shoved under the rug and hidden and covered up and you know. You know, and so I'm just I don't know. I, I again, you know, there's, there, there's, there, there's, again, you, you and I look at things from a Lutheran perspective, though. Um, you know, when you're dealing with some groups, um, you know, there's this thing that, you know, you have to, you know, force people to be Christian, even if they don't really want to be. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, or or at least have this uh, American civil religion panache of being Christian, though they're really not. The you know has nothing to do actually with the gospel. Yeah, you think right. about yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, you talk about giving money, all right? Getting people to give money for a flag that's going to impose their religion on other people, as opposed to say giving the money to um, help actually bring the gospel to people, so that when they do see a Christian flag at say a church, um, that they'll know what it means and and that they'll um, mm-hmm. feel a sense of belonging. You know, or something like that. And, you know, the other reality is, you know, what are you going to sue them on? On what basis? You know, that, I mean, it's public property. Um, they're probably, you know, uh, um, courts have tended to, to shy away from putting things, you know, putting things up instead of, you know, demanding crosses and things be placed there. Unless, you know, you do some something else to kind of, you know, Decrossify it or something. So I don't know. I just rather have something else there. Of course, it could be in Indonesia. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to worry about Christian flags flying high in, on public property in Indonesia. No. So this story was near and dear to my heart because one of the other things that happened at my church this morning was um, a an Indonesian woman um, became a member of our church. And she... Uh, She's told me about, you know, what it's like to live there, where they have bomb scanners at the, um, at the church and on, especially on Christmas and Easter, where they've had bombs going off, um, in the church, people have been killed. Uh, it's a, it's a scary place, uh, to be a Christian, right? In, um, Indonesia, only, uh, let's see. 86.1% of the population is Muslim. So that's a overwhelming majority. Um, Protestant Christians are 5.7% and Roman Catholics 3%. And, and when it says Protestant Christians, all right, my understanding is, as what I've gathered from her is that, um, when you, when you talk about 5.7% of the entire country, that there's basically one Protestant denomination which is basically Lutheran. Um, and, and so you've, you've got Lutherans and Catholics and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so this, um, what's name church is it? Batak Christian Protestant church, uh, is basically a Lutheran church. Yeah. Yeah. They're part of the Lutheran world federation. Hmm. So, um, they're, and they're in fellowship with, the um, ELCA, but um, from from talking to her, uh, they're very. Um, I have a hunch that that connection goes way way back. Um, well, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of these. Um, I don't know if I can use um, de- developing nations that have these connections. Um, uh, Indonesia, Kenya. A um, lot of these other churches, yeah, they were planted a long time ago. They've got these long-standing relationships. However, theologically, they are in two different places. Right. Uh, the ELCA and Luther Church of Sweden, and some of these churches that had, you know, started these, some of these church bodies, uh, have drifted off into to liberalism, and these church bodies are still very, very conservative. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and and I was talking to her about churches in America that teach the Bible's not the word of God and, and things like that. And she was just floored. She go, well, why do they call themselves Christian? I mean, she, she didn't understand that. Um, and, but you know, she also doesn't understand, uh, why would somebody, um, why would somebody be a member of a congregation and never actually attend? Well, she's from a, a world that you could be killed for saying you're Christian. Right. You right. know, so, um, you know, why you would you want to say you're granted. Christian if you can be killed? <laughs> yeah, right. you don't, you're not going to take it for granted. And that's exactly what's going on here is um, there are 100 members of the of the Patak Christian Protestant Church in Jakarta. And um, 
They gathered to worship while hundreds of police and security guards stood outside. Imagine this. You got a hundred people in church. You got hundreds, hundreds, it says, police. Um, and, um, because, uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> they had, uh, um, Last Sunday, the church the, has been boarded up since June twentieth. Um, they had filed a permit to have a church in two thousand and six, uh, but the officials uh, never responded. And um, so, in last December, the Muslims protested. These Christians were meeting without a permit, and uh, so the officials sealed the church, and they had a whole bunch of uh, school uh, school buses out there to cart the people off to someplace else to worship. Because it's a heavy, heavily Muslim uh, neighborhood, and and so they're they're worried about um, sort of uprisings and, and stuff like that. And in fact, uh, last Sunday, the I'm not going to try to pronounce the name, but uh, the pastor and church elder. Uh, were ambushed as they were going to church around 9 a.m. The elder was stabbed in the stomach, subsequently hospitalized. Meanwhile, the uh, pastor was s- struck on the head with a wooden plank. Yeah, and so, there's a hardline Islamic Defenders Front, and they had been part of the group that had attacked. And this Islamic um, Defenders Front had you know, told the Christians to, you know, to leave um, and now the government says has offered to give the church a plot of land to build a new church. Uh, it doesn't say where it is, if it's in a good location, if it's, you know, for all we know, it could be in the middle of a swamp somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. So it may just be in a, a decent place, sort of off mm-hmm. away, you know, but here these people, they, they set up a church, um, you know, where there's lots of Muslims. All right, keep in mind that in Indonesia, it's illegal to proselytize. Well, okay. If you got, and I'm going to round down the numbers here, 85% of the population is Muslim, then where aren't you going to find a lot of Muslims? Well, that's true. <laughs> but you know, if, I mean, you yeah. know... You know, but if this, you know, eighty five percent of the people in the Massachusetts Bay in Colony were Calvinist, man, where was you know Roger Williams supposed to set up shop? You know, there's just no other place to set it up. I mean, you know, oh no, you can't do that in in this neighborhood. Well, where else are we going to? Because you know, it's kind of like you know, ninety eighty five percent of the people are Muslim. So no matter where we go, there's going to be a lot of Muslims. Right, right. But I, you know, it may be that this Islamic Defenders Front is not as strong in other areas, you know, sort of keeping the peace. But, you know, I, I don't know. This is, I mean, Indonesia is, I'm sorry, but from a religious, a religious perspective, it's a horrible place to live. You know, they need a permit to gather, not a permit to build a building or something like that. A permit to gather as Christians. Which they filed for and never heard back from. Right. Yeah. Three years later, people are protesting that they're meeting without a permit. Yeah. Uh So three and a half years. So, yeah, that means it got buried, it got thrown away, whatever. Oh, no. We just won't give them a permit, then they can't meet. Yeah, sorry. It doesn't work that way. Right. And the other problem is the government itself. This is the president of the country. It relies heavily on the Islamic parties in parliament to keep power. Therefore, he doesn't crack down on these groups. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas, you know, uh, um, you know, I mean, I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, well, you know, you talk about this woman from Indonesia, so she could probably understand. But, you know, I mean, you know, why is it so many groups don't want to, you know, uh, um, say, look, they're not bothering you. They're not trying to proselytize. You know, they're they're just gathering together and worshiping. Uh, as a matter of fact, what happened today is, yeah, they, they you know, at least when this this article was written, is they they allowed those hundred people to do their worship. Yeah, yeah, they actually did. So, you know, I'm happy for them. I mean, now this, you know, ties into the whole question of, all right, 
so this church, just uh, kind of on a side but related note, um, the the church that we talked about last week that where they they were going to burn the Quran in Florida, um, they're the city is now suing the church and are, are basically charging that church with all of the expenses that um, of additional security and everything that they needed. They handed the bill for all that to the church. All right. So here is a similar situation where um, the church is doing something and they're um, it's requiring a lot of resources on the part of, of the city to, um, to allow them to meet um, and, and prevent violence and things like that. Um, should, should this church be billed, you know, for this additional security and stuff like that? Personally, I would say no. It has nothing to do with who's Christian or who's Muslim, but by the fact that what they are doing, they're not inciting violence or anything like that. It's, it's threats are being made against them. They are not threatening anyone. All they're trying to do is right. meet. I'd say, you know, the, the, if anybody's going to pay, it should be the Islamic Defenders Front. Right. You know. Um, now, obviously, in Indonesia, it's a bad thing maybe to, you know, become Christian. That's not a, a healthy thing for you. Um, other places, it says, well, losing your faith uh, can actually cause a tr- can cause trouble. Now... <clears throat> Uh, basically, this is dealing with extremely strict religions, uh, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Mormons, and other groups that, you know, have this very tight inbound thing. Um, and then once people leave, they don't have anything to turn to, uh, especially because a lot of those groups uh, practice shunning, you mm-hmm. know. Jehovah's Witnesses. If you leave Jehovah's Witnesses, you are shunned. You, you, your friends, the people that you were formerly formerly hung around with the Kingdom Hall and stuff, will not talk to you. They will act like you no longer exist. Yep. And it's that causes a, a lot of these people. Same thing. Yeah, and that causes a Jack Mormon. A lot of people, you know, people become very depressed and fall into drinking and uh, alcoholism and other issues. Mm-hmm. But you also don't have somebody like watching over your shoulder the whole time to see what you're doing. And so you can actually go, oh, so what's all this alcohol and stuff that, <laughs> that I've been hearing about? You know, now that I don't have anybody watching over my shoulder anymore, I can check it out. Yeah. So this guy, uh, this, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember who this guy is. Uh, uh, Christopher Shitley of Penn State University. Uh, examined 423 cases of people associated with the religions from 1972 to 2006 and compared the self-reported health of 96 people who switched to another religion and 54 people who left religion altogether with those who stayed. And it found that 40% of members of strict religious groups reported that they were in excellent health, but only 25% of members in those groups who switched to another religion uh, said that they were in excellent health. And uh, he said, um, you know, um, you know, the stress of leaving the strict groups were very were possible factors. Um, and or it could be that the person left because their health was degrading, and um, and like, okay, take Jehovah's Witnesses for example; they didn't allow blood transfusions, right? So, all right. You're a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, Jehovah's Witness. You need a blood transfusion. They say no, you can't do it, and you say, "Well, forget that. I'm leaving Jehovah's Witnesses." Then, all right. Well, you're not going to be probably in real great health. At, you know, people that need a mm-hmm. blood transfusion. There's a there's a decent chance that whatever it was that caused you to need that, you, that later on you're not going to be in real great health. <laughs> For that matter, I I suppose uh, some of the ones that that wouldn't have been in real great health in the Jehovah's Witnesses died from not having the blood transfusion. So, not that that's you know anything amusing or anything, but it's certainly going to skew the results a little bit. I I don't know whether that would really have any statistical. Uh, it said forty percent of members of strict religious groups from reported they were in excellent health, but only twenty five percent of those groups who switched to another religion reported that they were 
Oh, I know what it is. It says that um, the next paragraph. I'm sorry. Uh, findings also show that people who are raised to remain in strict religious groups more likely to report that they were in better health than people in other religious religions. Well, that's true. I mean, if you're in a uh, um, for the you know a group that does not permit you to sm- smoke, does not permit you to drink, does not permit you to use caffeine. Um, yeah, generally you are probably going to wind up being in better health, you know, a mm-hmm. uh, bunch of those, you know, compared to those slovenly Lutherans that are drinking beer all the time and, you know, all the empty calories and probably getting a little bit obese, um, you know, and overweight. Uh, yeah, it, it probably is going to, you know, have some ways in helping your health. Um, but those are things we can control anyway. I mean, yeah. So you can understand though, you know, why they'd be healthier, but you know, it's all the law. You have to do this. Right. You well, know. you know, this is just like, you know, you're going to have, if you have Big Brother watching over you, um, you know, you're not going to, you're going to have peace and, um, and you're not going to have as much trouble with crime and, and, you know, all kinds of other problems. All right. But at what price? And, at, and especially when you're talking, you know, this isn't even the state, this is the church, you know, that's, it, it's one thing to encourage people to live out their faith. Uh, it's something else to be, um, you know, checking in on them, and and you have to turn in your uh, your tax records to show that mm-hmm. that you're tithing, and um, you know, and, and and stuff like that, and like that ought to make you a bit nervous. And submit a diet plan each week. Um. You know, uh, you know this 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 family that visited our, our, the other night, and they said, "Well, what 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 would you say is different about Lutherans, you know, from other church bodies?" And I say, "We really understand the gospel. You know, we really put our heart and soul in the gospel and what it's all about." And I said, "And we emphasize the freedom of the gospel. You know, we don't have rules. Uh, one of them was raised pretty strict Methodist." And I said, "You know, all the you know," and he talked about some of the rules they had in church. I said, "We don't believe in those type of rules." You know, we expect people to use their freedom responsibly, but it's a freedom that God has given, and we emphasize that very strongly. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I don't know. What do you think Christopher Hitchens would say about this? <laughs> well, he uh, wouldn't uh, worry about what other people are, what the church is telling him to do or not to do, but he's certainly not right. in good health. That's right. Now, I don't know. I, this is an opinion piece from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Personally, my opinion was this guy who wrote this thing, who apparently was supposed to had a class with Hitchens or something, um, a very, very snide, mm-hmm. in my opinion, uh, the way this article comes across. But... Um, he says that last uh, Monday, September Monday, September twentieth, was everybody pray for Christopher Hitchens Day, um, and um, that somebody, and then doesn't he even say who put it together? Um, you know, said you know, I guess to, he has throat cancer, um, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, um, so I guess his uh, health is in, in, in you know strong doubt here. And so, uh, 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 they, you know, they're praying for his, uh, recovery and his conversion, whether Christopher Hitchens likes it or not. So this is, for those who are not familiar, Christopher Hitchens is, um, he's a, uh, political writer and, and things like that, but, and professor, but he's also, um, a very outspoken atheist. Right. Isn't he the, he, he wrote one of the books last year, you know, the new atheist books, you know, mm-hmm. um, why God is not great or something. I think that was that. I think it was why God is not great. Uh, the one that he wrote. Um, and he is very, you know, uh, um, I mean, he, he is, you know, he's, he, he's gone after, you know, not just the, the wild, uh, Right wing people, but he's, you know, also critiqued Mother Teresa and the Dalai Lama. I mean, if you're religious, he hit year and year on his short list. Right, right. And, you know, and speaking of right wing, politically, uh, Christopher is, is pretty right wing. Um, uh, in some, uh, 
he was very supportive of us going into Iraq. Otherwise, he's not too right wing. I don't think. I'm really not quite sure. I haven't read other than some of his stuff on Iraq. I hadn't really read too much more of his stuff. So, which but, is a, but he's uh, so he's in the United States. His brother Peter uh, is over in the UK, and Peter is is actually was an outspoken atheist who became a Christian. Hmm. I've never heard about that. I've never heard yeah. of his brother. Never heard about that. Yeah, yeah. So brothers don't get together very often, um, I, but uh, they're they're pretty pretty opposed uh, as far as their views on things. They're kind of opposites. Um, so okay, well, be that as it may. So so apparently you got a bunch of Christians, and they said next Monday we went all all these Christians, and uh, Monday the twentieth. You know, please pray for healing or recovery, you know, recovery, healing for him uh, and his conversion. And this guy is just getting, I mean, I just thought this guy was snide. Uh, no doubt, many of those praying for Mr. Hitchens are doing so out of the kind of spite that has shaped much of American Christianity into a triumphalistic, whitewashed sepulcher of civil religion and empty pieties. It's likely that many of those who prayed for his salvation Monday cursed him regularly before he got cancer. Maybe it was those darker, earlier prayers that are finally being answered. Well, what's your proof for that? Right, right. He's saying, no doubt, likely, you know, based on his own perceptions. Right. I mean, Christians. you know, how do you know? Um, um, how do you know it's many? What, what? You know, I love the words like some, many, hmm. you know, well, you know, many editorial writers are stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's likely that this, this, this that the author of this has no idea what he's talking about because he didn't talk to anybody who's doing any of this. Right. Yeah, um, he has no actual examples. He doesn't even cite the person that um, that started out that came up with this or it doesn't right. cite any actual individuals involved um, in this uh, pray for Hitchens day. Right. It doesn't say, okay, you know, I, I, and, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, uh, what does it mean? The kind of spite, you know, how was praying for his health and conversion, a spiteful thing? Yeah. No, that's we do that out of love. You know, here's the thing, and this this caught my eye, um, because when word got out that Christopher Hitchens did um, have cancer, I found out about it from a Christian friend who said, "Hey, did you hear Christopher Hitchens has um, cancer?" And, and and I went, "Christopher Hitchens, Christopher Hitchens," you know, been a while, you know. The name rung a bell, and I, I seemed to remember atheists tacked on with it, and I had to go look him up quick. And 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 I was like, no, that's you know, and 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 both of us, we we were talking about it and saying, oh, you know, that's awful, and um, you know, I really hope that that he comes to faith, and hope that you know maybe Peter can, you know, can can talk to him, or, or that some of the discussions that he's had with his brother, that you know, maybe something will. Will finally the, where he's heard the gospel and that'll somehow sink in and 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 you know and that, that God will produce faith in him and save him and um you know and and so yeah as as we were talking about it and that led us to talk about um, other mutual friends that we have that um, that are also not Christians and how concerned we are for them and and um, you know how much that we want them to be saved and you know so this guy's more concerned about this author of this article is is more concerned about uh uh i mean he actually he says any religion worth its salt should be more concerned about how we've lived our lives on this planet the ultimate disposition of his soul should be his concern alone yeah you really don't get christianity at all dude yeah well i mean just like you know at the end of this you know uh, um you know instead of praying for hitch pray instead that president barack obama um to begin to the uh, to begin the hard work of actually earning his Nobel Peace Prize, which for this guy means uh, ending the war in Iraq, pulling everybody out of Afghanistan, uh, you know, and sitting at home and just, you know, twiddling our thumbs here. Why, 
uh, uh, Islam, you know, pray that America pulls back from the abyss of Islamophobia. In other words, so the mosque has to go up in New York. Um, you know, that's, that's, you know, um, you know, we have to translate, you know, his, his viewpoints. Pray for our nation's liberation from our own homegrown religious bigots while you're at it. You know, you mean like you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, allow Mr. Hitchens the dignity of his agnosticism. Actually, he's not agnostic, he's atheist. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, the reality is, is um, you know, I, I allow him the dignity of his atheism. He's perfectly free to be an atheist. I'm not going to try and say you can't be an atheist. Go right ahead. Um, doesn't mean shouldn't pray for him that God would open his eyes. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm leaving it up to God. You know, I to me, you know, I I was you know I told somebody my idea of tolerance means I you have the right to be wrong and so do I. Mm-hmm. Because we have kind you know a lot of times we have conflicting viewpoints, and I you think you're wrong and you think I'm wrong. Tolerance is I I'm I'm giving you the right to be wrong. Right. Right. But it doesn't mean that we're both right. You know, I, I always say that uh, if two people disagree on a, on a factual um, issue uh, that's not just a preference, mm-hmm. um, at least one of them is wrong. Could be that both are, but at least one of them has to be if they're contradictory each other. Right. So, you know, but so, so fine. You know, I think he's wrong at being an atheist. Mm-hmm. Fine. He thinks I'm wrong at being Christian. Right. Fine. Doesn't but, bother me. Yeah, but this author um, says that we shouldn't be concerned about him. <laughs> right. You know, he, you know I, I mean, I just consider this to be a very, very... I would no, I, I don't know. I didn't see if there's any place here for comments. I would have wondered if there's any letters to the editor on this. Cause I just found this to be a very snide and, and insulting article. I really did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sort of moved to pray for this author, too. You know, now, obsessing over whether Christopher Hitchens eventually sees the light and turns to God is ludicrous and beside the point. Uh, nope. 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 It's our primary concern is a person's eternal welfare. Whether they, so I, what, what their political position is, is irrelevant. <laughs> right. Any other, any, anything else is irrelevant. Um, I, I, I don't know about you, but I kind of got the impression that this author himself is atheist. And has a real problem with Christianity. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. It wasn't just me. Yeah, it's another one of it's just me. That's why I'm saying we should pray for him. You know, Jesus yeah. said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. All right. I don't do that out of obedience. I do that out of concern for my brothers, you know, for my fellow man. And, uh, well, you know, come to, and fellow, and, and fellow women, as far as that goes. Well, um, mankind. You know, and kind. Okay. You know, mankind. humankind. You know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, 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 okay. we need to teach you to be. You see, you need to move to Massachusetts where you learn to be more PC in your language. It's just you know, in the air out here. Are you, are you using uh, the the proposed creed where it says, uh, uh, "Who for us humans and for our salvation came down from heaven"? No, no. I would I would prefer who who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, uh, um, I, I, I am not, uh, really cool on, uh, um, for us men and for our salvation. Uh, yeah. I, I, every time we hit that one, I think, boy, there's like, and there's, and there's guests there that I go, all right, I hope they get that. <laughs> it just, it just grates on the, it just grates on the 21st century year. It really does. And it's got, it's sort of redundant too. Right, you know, yeah, we kind of know who, who 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 we are. You could do uh, like but, for all humanity, right? Because did, did somebody said something? Of, well, it can't just say be for us because that means just us in the church or something like that, you know. But you know, so, know. you could say you could translate for the world, but I don't know. Anyway, yeah. you know, uh, 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 but go going back to the even this guy, even this atheist, Christ came to die for, and. Yeah, it's kind of a sad, sad note to end on. But you know what? He's from Pittsburgh. You really got to feel bad for him. Have you seen how the Pirates are playing this year? You know, that's his, he's just grumpy because the Pirates, they have a worse record than Kansas City this year. I mean, that's that, that's going to depress you, I'm sure. You know, and he's, you know, he's, 
Actually, yeah. you know, you know, you talk about you know, love your enemies and all that kind of stuff. I have to admit that the fact that um, the Vikings are doing really lousy, um, because I'm still bitter about Brett Favre and and his actions against the Packers. <laughs> He didn't have Packer actions against the Packers. He just wanted to go do something. Forgive. Forgive. <laughs> he brought you guys a Super Bowl title that you hadn't had in years. Get over it. And then he on. betrayed us. <laughs> At least he failed playing as a Jet, you know? So, you know. And now he's failing it, as a Viking. That's right. It, 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 you, know, you, you know, it's not a failure as a guy. He just can't say, you know what? It's time for me to retire. Yeah. And he, you know, and he's getting big, pay big bucks to prove that they were right. It was, uh, you know. And and I wish no, I have no ill will. I don't desire for him yeah. to get, you know, hurt as his bones get brittler and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, I, but I, yeah. I, I do want to see the Vikings lose. <laughs> yeah, but there are those there, you know, I mean, you know, we, we remember up here when, um, you know, uh, um, the rocket, you know, moved. You know, was tossed out of Boston and, you know, eventually went wound up over in New York, you know, and everybody was really, you know, bitter about that. But he, you know, he got, he actually, went, you know, played better. But then we found out why he was drugged up. So <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> okay. We got to end this, folks. Yep. Uh, hey, no, if you got any comments, always, um, podcast at crossfeednews.com always welcome your comments your thoughts or comment on youtube wherever else you see this um god just watch over you bless you be with you and give you his strength this week yep good night everybody god bless